working on the last couple of months. So the first one is Miss Playbooks. Uh, Miss Playbooks, they address common issues that you encounter if you work in a C-Cert, SOC, or CTI team. They're built on top of Jupyter Notebooks, and basically this gives you a way to collect documentation in a markdown format, and also to execute some code. In our case, it will be Python and PyMISP. This allows you then to access MISP. So combining MISP with PyMISP and Python, and Jupyter Notebooks gives us the MISP playbooks. Now the MISP playbooks, they're published on the GitHub repository. Currently have about 24 playbooks. Um, next to the playbooks, there's also a bit of documentation, some guidance and technical documentation, how to set up your own environment, how to contribute to the repository, and how to uh, adjust the existing playbooks. And also some conversion scripts to convert MISP playbooks to Kakao security playbooks. The playbooks that currently exist, they're playbooks for MISP users and for MISP administrators. Now those for MISP users, they allow you to do some investigation, for example, domain IP lookup, uh, look up CVA details, verify if indicators exist in Elastic or in TimeSketch. They also allow you to create events from Sentinel security incidents, to do some malware triage, um, do some threat intelligence curation, and also to get to know some of the, the specialities of MISP, for example, how do you need to work with MISP objects, how do you need with MISP warning lists, and what are the different timestamps and dates that are used in MISP. Then for the MISP administrators, there are uh, playbooks that allow you to do a large deployment of users and organizations and also to bulk delete of MISP events. Um, currently, there's still a couple of playbooks in the queue, so they're tracked as issues. If you have a request for new MISP playbooks, uh, just open an issue in the GitHub repository and we'll try to include them. Um, if you have developed your own MISP playbooks, um, it's a good idea to also contribute it to the repository. The next thing that I want to talk about is another repository that I set up to demonstrate the value of CTI in organizations. So basically to have a way of how is it, how can you demonstrate in an easy way to your organization, to your management, to director, how CTI can prove valuable in your organization. Now, there are already a lot of resources out there. But for organizations that are not that mature, it can be quite difficult to get started with this. So the idea is to have a practical, pragmatic approach for how you can operationalize CTI, how you can make use of it within your organization. Um, the current, there's a currently initial list published on GitHub. It's still in a markdown format, and from the presentation yesterday of DFRQ, might be a good idea to, for example, format it in a YAML file or a JSON file, so that it's not only accessible for humans, but also for computers. Um, this is a current list that's being built. It's a table in Markdown with a couple of details on high-level description on this is how it can provide value to your organization, a couple of practical examples, and then some references. So as I said, just an initial list of my experience, and it's, it would be good if there's a contribution from the community. And then the last thing that I want to cover is ICS CSERT. That's a um, community that I started a couple of months back to disseminate information relevant for industrial control systems. Uh, the membership is free. It's not affiliated with the vendor or with a government organization. The idea is that once you get access, you also submit some content back. There are two services that are provided. One is OpenCV for advisories. Might be a good idea maybe to replace that with vulnerability lookup in the future. And the other one is MISP. So there's a community MISP started. Um, currently, there are about 15 organizations that are member of the ICS CSERT MISP. And 400 events have been published specifically for the critical infrastructure sectors. And now, 400 events might seem like a lot already. Just to put this in context, because you need to provide something to the community. I bootstrapped the environment with events that have been published on the MISPRIF, circle, MISPRIF server from Circle. All those events that are published as TLP white, TLP clear, and relevant for the industrial sector. Um, once they get into the MISP community, in the MISP server, there's a curation process that takes place, verification with warning list and hash lookup. If there are matches, the IDS flag is disabled. And the uh, sharing guidelines to be part of the MISP server is exactly the same as the one on one circle. So you need to adhere to the sharing guidelines. And if there's no TLP set, the default TLP level is TLP Ember. That's all that I wanted to share. <laughs>